from the dead, we would not be gathered here in a Christian church and worship service, but he did, and so we are, and for this we give him thanks. Moreover, we are here today, especially on the wonderful occasion of the celebration of the bicentennial of God's first gathering, this dear congregation. It is good to remember whence we came, to realize more fully who we are and whose we are, and to ready ourselves for the duty that lies ahead. We are not, of course, the first people to engage in such celebration of the goodness of God to us, so we might learn from those who have gone before us. Many long years ago, on the other side of the world, when the Lord God himself led Joshua and the people of Israel out of the wilderness across the river Jordan on dry ground and into the promised land, he told Joshua to command 12 men, one from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, to take up 12 stones from the riverbed and to build a memorial precisely to commemorate what God had done for them. Those ordinary old river rocks became an extraordinary new sign, not only to remind the people then of the mighty works of God, but also and especially to remind the people then to teach their children later about the mighty works of God. The memorial was first to help both them and their children remember God's grace in generations past, realize God's grace in the present, and hope for God's grace in the future. When your children ask you in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over. This remembrance was not simply for those who had experienced the passage firsthand. It was even more for teaching those who did not cross over, those who had not yet been born. It was meant to pass on to them the knowledge of the power and the goodness of God, and so to engender faith in each new generation. So here we are at First Presbyterian today asking, what do these stones mean? What do these bricks stacked so high mean? What do these arches and windows and pulpit and font and table mean? We are the children of our parents and grandparents as they were of their parents and grandparents who have long since joined the great cloud of witnesses. And we are realizing that they built this sanctuary almost 150 years ago, not only as a place for them to worship then, but also as a sign, a great stone memorial for us of the always prior goodness of God, who a little more than 50 years earlier then, now 200 years ago, had gathered them here as a congregation. And now, we are the parents and grandparents who shall tell our children in times to come what we have learned. What do these stones mean? These stones mean that the God and Father of our crucified, dead, and buried Lord and Savior Jesus Christ raised him from the dead to new and eternal life, both for the forgiveness of our sins and also for the promise of eternal life. That is why our parents first gathered here and then later built this church for themselves and for us. That is why we are here again yet today that is why we intend and hope to continue here far into the future. Yes, there are other reasons for gathering here today. We enjoy each other's company. We appreciate tremendously the music. We provide vital services to the local community and around the world. The list could go on. Those are all good and important in and of themselves. But the real reason, the 
into the promised land. And now God has raised his son Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sin and the promise of eternal life. The Lord God Almighty, who created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, saved us from ourselves and saved us to himself forever. Not because we at all deserved it, but simply and sheerly by his own goodness and mercy. Thanks be to God. Part of what these stones mean to us today is that God has claimed us as his own. That God carries us safe through life. And that whatever may happen to us, God is good and powerful to save. Indeed, we have received a goodly heritage, a beautiful inheritance, more precious than silver and gold, more precious than life and breath. We remember God's mercy, not only as a past event, but also as a living reality and, the, and as a good hope for the future. So we tell of it and we pass it along to our children and our children's children. We rejoice in God's glory and power. We cherish our salvation, and we intend for those who come after us to be brought into this living reality. Let us never forget God's goodness and mercy. Let us never fail to learn what our parents would still teach us. Let us never fail to teach this to our children, and let us never, even as we have received this beautiful inheritance, let us never fail to maintain and even to improve this sign and this memorial for our children and our children's children. What do these stones mean? There is a second reason for this grand memorial. When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground, for the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty. Not only are we here to let our children know about God's good salvation, yes, of course, we are to start there. Not only are we here to teach the children well about God's good salvation, but also we are to bear witness outside this building and beyond this congregation so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty. And that is to say that in addition to our Christian education programs, both at home and here at church, we are also to embark upon and carry out a mission to Clarksville, a mission to Montgomery County, a mission to Tennessee, a mission to the United States of America, a mission to all the world, Lord help the First Presbyterian Church of Clarksville, Tennessee, has not ever, does not now, and shall not ever exist merely for its own sake or simply to provide services to its own members. Instead, it has always, does now, and shall forever exist for the sake of God's mission to all the peoples of the earth. Let not our hands grow weary. What is that mission? We are to tell people about the Lord God Almighty who created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. We are to tell people about the Lord God who brought the people of Israel out of Egypt and into the promised land. We are to tell people about the Lord God who raised Jesus Christ from the dead to new and eternal life. We are to tell people about the Lord God who has forgiven our sin and promised us eternal life as he has gathered us here at First Presbyterian Church. And we are to do this so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty. We have learned again this year that war is mighty. We have learned again over the last two years that disease is mighty. We have learned again through the course of our lives that nations rise and fall with little regard for our individual lives or those of our loved ones. Each of these realities is mighty. Each of these in its own way is to be feared. But even as the angel said to the shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, fear not. For behold,
behold, I bring you good news of a great joy that will be for all the people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. That is to say, Jesus is Lord. The Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, has come to be with us as one of us in the person of Jesus Christ. And God is infinitely more mighty than all sin, death, evil, decay, disease, destruction, decline, war, pestilence, and disaster put together. The Lord is mighty. Let us, let all the peoples of the earth know this. third reason for this grand memorial. When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over. So that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Not only are we to let our children know about God's grace and good salvation, not only are we to bear witness to those outside this building and beyond this congregation, but also we ourselves, as well as those who come after us, are to be reminded to fear the Lord our God forever. To fear the Lord does not mean only to be afraid of Him, though surely any inkling of His immensity and power To fear the Lord means also for us to worship Him and to serve Him. That is why we come here week after week to worship and serve the Lord, to sing our hymns of praise, to confess our sins, to hear His scriptures read and His gospel preached, to affirm our faith, to offer our prayers, to offer our gifts, to offer ourselves, to give thanks to God and to receive His benediction. Thanks be to God, there is nothing else more important for us to do. And when the Lord tells Joshua for the people to fear the Lord your God forever, he does not mean for us to worship him only on the good and sunny days that we feel like doing it. He does not even mean for us to worship him only the few remaining days of our lives here. He means forever. Yes, that starts here and now, but it continues into all of what is the chief end of man? What is the ultimate purpose of human existence? Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. That is to say, the ultimate purpose of our lives is to worship God and to be focused and centered upon Him forever. How wonderful that is. Our passing through death to the other side will likely be as frightening for us as it was for the people of Israel to pass over the River Jordan. But the memory that God carried them safe across the river gives us courage and good hope that God will carry us safe across the river to the eternal worship of God Almighty. Almost 150 years ago, the members of First Presbyterian Church built this beautiful sanctuary, not only as a place for worship then, but also as a great stone memorial for us of the always prior goodness of God who had earlier, now 200 years ago, gathered them here as a congregation. Our mothers and fathers dug the foundation deep, and then they stacked stone upon stone and brick upon brick building this grand memorial. It is a high privilege that we, their children, gather here today. We see their sign. We gather around the same pulpit, the same baptismal font, the same communion table as they did. We hear the same word of God read and preached. We see the same word of God made visible in the sacraments as they did standing here today. We know how much they loved God, which is to say how much they realized how much God first loved them. Now it is our turn. What sign are we building? What memorial are we putting in place? What evidence shall we 
believe that we knew God. Of course, we want to continue to provide not only for preserving, but also for improving these buildings. And perhaps the even more pressing question is, will there be a strong, vital Christian congregation here at First Presbyterian Church for our children and our children's children? Ultimately, the survival and the well-being of the church are in God's hands, and you know that. But parts of the work have been entrusted to us, and to that extent, those depend upon our diligence, faithfulness, and response to the gospel. What can we do now to provide for the faithfulness, health, and growth of this congregation? Let us live today in such a way that when our voices fail and only these stone monuments to our faith are left to speak for us, it may be said of us that we knew that God was good to us and that we knew uh, the one from whom we come and to whom we go was present among us in the person and spirit of Jesus Christ and that the one thing we most wanted to do in life was to be faithful and loyal to him, our Lord and Master. What do these stones mean? What is the reason for brick and mortar, glass and lead, oak and slate? What is the reason for that font with water, that table with bread and wine, and this high pulpit from which to read and preach? They all mean that the Lord, God Almighty, the God and Father of Jesus Christ has carried even us safe across the river from sin to forgiveness, from death to eternal life. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely let us run with endurance the race that is set before us.